Oh, what's up, guys? Gun here, ready for the NBA 2019 season. It is a season that I've probably looked the most forward to, uh, as far as I can remember. It, it's been a long time since we've been able to look at all the different teams in the NBA uh, and really wonder what's going to happen. A lot of really interesting, fun teams have been built to the disbandment of the Golden State Warriors, LeBron to the Lakers, big trades. There's a lot of fun teams out there. Obviously, the Nets are working on something. I know KD's injury is going to hinder that for the short term. Klay Thompson's injury is going to hinder what the uh, Warriors are trying to do, but they still got Curry and, and D'Angelo Russell. And then, of course, what the Clippers have built is, in my opinion, one of like the best all-around teams in a long time. A lot of fun teams. The Rockets, Westbrook, Harden. Um, so I'm super stoked, super excited uh, to play some uh, NBA DFS, especially in the early uh, in the early months where you get to guess a little bit more on usage and, and uh, great fantasy plays and maybe take advantage of pricing that hasn't got to where they needed to get. Uh, today, Fandle um, made some viral DFS circle news uh, with an announcement on uh, how they intend their product, their NBA product, to uh, run this season. Um, they announced that they would... Uh, get rid of the low score drop uh, feature and just go back to the way it used to be. No late swap, no shenanigans. If you guys play a player that uh, gets late scratched, you're just going to have to eat that zero and move on to the next one. And, of course, uh, this has refueled, re-sparked the age-old late swap debate. Uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about the low score drop feature in and of itself. I know a lot of people were not fans of the low score drop feature, uh, especially if, if you were finishing top five in a tournament and you looked at your lineup and if you realized that his low score drop was lower than your low score drop, you would have won if, it, if if all your players counted. Like it's a, it's a sick feeling. I get it. But from a uh, competition commissioning standpoint, uh, if I was trying to meet in the middle when I have a, 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 a vocal minority likely player base that uh, really, really, really wants late swap. They understand the NBA is so volatile after main slate lock, 7 p.m. There's so many questionables throughout the day. There's teams on back-to-backs. There's surprise illnesses, surprise rest days, and stuff like that. Uh, versus um, the casual fan who uh, like to um, enjoy their night after lock. You know, they don't want to be glued to a computer all night uh, having to fill... Uh, forced to um, be flexible, be able to make changes if some news like that uh, came out. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you're a, a married father, three kids, you know you have to have to take care of your family after 7 p.m. and it's just kind of hard to to be glued to the to the computer. And I get both sides of the argument. I really do. And I thought that the low score drop feature from Fanduel was it got more hate than it deserved. It was an, a, a, a definite effort by Fanduel to to make a uh, make an adjustment, make a feature that would kind of meet in the middle. That way, if you did roster a player that got scratched and you got a zero, you get rid of the zero. Um, but it did have some um, it had some counter effects on how lineup construction began because people just used that, um, and and I did it too to uh, go and roster. A cheap player sometimes taking a min price calculated zero uh, to assist you in and stack in your lineup even more. So if you in if two years ago you could only fit in two or three studs, now you could fit in four, maybe five, just based on what you did with that salary. And and I think that was the right move. And I, I think that was an unintended consequence that um, that Fanduel realized, you know, as as they looked at their tournaments that. Um, they didn't necessarily intend for that to happen, and it is what it is. So for them to get rid of the low score drop feature, like I get it. Uh, I'm not leaning too far gay or nay, one side or the other. Um, I appreciate having to pick each player in a lineup. Like how crazy would it be if we talked about dropping your lowest score in an NFL lineup, right? It's just it's not the heart of DFS. So I get getting rid of it, but I certainly feel like um, the new – uh, no late swap is not not good, man. It's really not good. And the Sharps, guys who play DFS, will argue 
uh, four lane swap um, and there are people that believe casual players uh, even if they know it or not are at a disadvantage if late swap is a feature because uh, sharks and really really sh smart players sharp players have the ability to swap hundreds of lineups out uh, make big time changes if a big usage player got scratched and they can go uh, fire up backups and, and rebalance their lineup I get that but you cannot tell me that a casual player enjoys uh, players in his lineups getting scratched. Uh, for instance, uh, say uh, Locke is at 7 p.m. Jimmy Butler is scratched at 7.30. His game is at 9. You know, you got an hour and a half of knowing that your lineup is dead. And there's just no fun in that. It really is not. Um, so the announcement that, that Fando put out today... Uh, we're returning to our traditional NBA format for the 2019 season. That means your lowest score drop player in your lineup will no longer have their score dropped, so all nine of your players' scores count. As a reminder, NBA contests do not have late swap, so there's no need to keep an eye on the injury reports all night. Your lineup will lock at the start of the first game. This is uh, this is going to push me away from the, from the Fandle product. It already, in my uh, opinion, is handicapped um, versus... Uh, DraftKings or other sites and the main reason I believe that is because the scoring is just so bad it is horrendous three points for a block three points for a steal like we're waiting uh, variance uh, the highest variance NFL or excuse me NBA stats uh, basically count the same or more as points and rebounds and, and stuff that you can better project better uh, have a higher predictive value um, and you're putting your lineups more so in the hands of uh, home home uh, home stadium scoring versus uh, stuff that is just black and white, right? Assists, rebounds, points. These are the, the, the kind of things that we can project, uh, we can predict, and we can bank on. And then uh, there's a lot of uh, scoring plays in the league for blocks and steals, where maybe the wrong player gets credited the steal and it becomes scorer's opinion or judgment call. Uh, and, it, and I just don't, I'm not a big fan of that. But, you know, it, it does shake things up. I appreciate having a different scoring system than DraftKings. If we came out here and said, Fandle, you have to change your scoring, you have to have late swap, and heck, you have to have multi-positional eligibility, well, then, you're, then you have DraftKings. You just play on DraftKings. So I, I, I definitely think there should be a difference here. So I'm not even going to freak out on the scoring uh, as much. Uh, but I, I, I personally do not like the scoring the way it is. Um, and I think DraftKings far and away has the better scoring with their uh, bonuses on double-doubles and triple-doubles and three-point shots and whatnot. So, um, yeah, man, I'm not, I'm not digging that. Uh, also put out by FanDuel. Four tips to help you avoid late scratches. You guys that have grinded a full NBA season know that <laughs> you can't. You just can't. You really can't. Fandle is, is they lost their mind. One, starting indicators. If a player has a green check mark next to their name, it means he's in the starting lineup the coach submitted. Uh, a new NBA rule came out this year that lineups have to be submitted 30 minutes before tip-off. Uh, and a lot of people think this is a great thing for DFS. And it's not a bad thing. It's really not. But I think a lot of people are uh, completely disregarding or overlooking the fact that most games that we're going to be targeting from a DFS standpoint, the juicy, high pace, high scoring games, are from West Coast teams. New Orleans, Houston, uh, then, of course, the Clippers and 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 the Lakers and the T-Wolves. These are, these are all teams that I was going after their games uh, a lot last year. And most of these teams are going to play at 8, 8, 9, 10. So the 30-minute before tip-off is not going to help you if your lineups lock at 7. It's just not. Number two, push notifications. Turn on push notifications to get late-breaking news on NBA players. This one is the super ironic one to me because if you guys are locked in at 7 p.m., and Fandle notifies you at 7.01, and you you guys can laugh, but so many, so many NBA bits and pieces tend to come out one minute after lock. Um, you'll have 
two hours to to know that hey your lineup's dead buddy it's uh lebron james resting tonight then you can do and you can do number three download the scout scout app uh sure whatever and then number four this is an actual thing that fandle suggested research player rest schedules predicting when players will rest is part of the game so do your research on team coach and player rest patterns now i get it a guy like Dwayne wade playing on a back-to-back maybe you look at him even though he played back-to-backs last year you know what I'm saying? some of the older players playing on night two of a back-to-back sure but can we predict that for sure on the first back-to-back no can we pre- predict all of these patterns in the first month no that those are stats that need a sample size to develop and probably wouldn't be something we go after until uh, the second half of the season. So that's just a joke of a suggestion to me. If a casual player <laughs> who who Fandle, who Fandle seems to be trying to predict or, or protect rather, if a casual player uh, doesn't have time to sit by his computer and late swap people because his players got scratched, is he really going to know what to look for in projecting player rest schedules? Like That's actually one of the craziest things I've ever read in DFS. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that um, the sites also recommend if you ever miss lock or your uh, your CSV doesn't upload and you contact support and they're like and you're like hey man this the site didn't work the site went down they're gonna hit you with this both sites will do it they'll say we recommend you have your lineups done 15 minutes prior to lock that's that's the company line <laughs> uh, it's just it's such a disaster um, so anyway that's kind of the gist of it man I'm I'm open um to hear what you guys think i really think this is a conversation that the the dfs community needs to happen but i also think the dfs community needs to be mindful of what the other side needs and the other side wants and that's why i think the low score drop got way too much hate like it was an effort by fanduel to do something right don't do nothing do something and i thought that was it wasn't the greatest medium it wasn't the greatest compromise it was certainly with flaw um, but it, it kind of did something. It at least made you feel like you're not completely dead in the water. Now, replacing your 10, 12K Anthony Davis with a, a 3K, 3,500, um, you know, backup power forward, it wasn't it wasn't the same, but it, it at least kind of felt like it, you, you, you were at least had a chance. And now this year, it's not. Um, and I know a lot of you guys that are anti-late swap, you can – you can wave the flag right now, and there's going to be guys that tell you this is going to hurt you in the long. Uh, this is going to help you more in the long run than hurt you. I don't care that that helplessness feeling, man. Before uh, uh, when you when you know that one of your players is out. Hey, Andrew Wiggins not going to play tonight. You, you could have had two hours to fix this in your lineups and and reflect that. But uh, hey, we're not going to let you do that. That's a sick feeling, man. It's a helpless feeling. It's one thing for players to get injured, but it's another thing for you to have ample time uh, to make an adjustment. So I'm curious to see what you guys think. Um, let me know your thoughts on Fanduel not having late swap and Fanduel not having low score drop. Is this going to force you elsewhere? Are you going to go to DraftKings? I I don't want to influence you guys. Uh, you know whatever whatever you guys like more, but I'm certainly. <laughs> right now thinking, hey, this is not going to be a year where you Fandle sees anything from me. Maybe a couple single answers or something like that, but I just can't. I can't f- I, I, uh, d- do something, buddy. Do something. So, are you guys DraftKings only? Do you guys like this? If you guys are a fan of No Late Swap, let me know, man. I, I Maybe I just live in a bubble, uh, but it certainly feels like everyone around me is not a fan of this move. And if you are a fan of this move by by Fandle. Let me know why. And if you guys see why, don't don't flame, don't be toxic. I'm I'm genuinely curious because I would assume Fandle's a large enough company where they had some some research data. They reached out, they did surveys, they that like somehow they came to this conclusion and believed that this was going to be the best interest of their uh player base. Uh it certainly seems they're trying to baby casual players, which I'm cool. You know, we want casual players um, but where are you guys at on this? And uh, we'll see how it how it plays out, man. I definitely think it will not be long until um, until we see this rear its ugly head, and we're gonna have Twitter on fire the first time uh, a player goes from probable to out. 
uh, after lock and it becomes a disaster or, or, or a leaky roof which you can't project it um, postpones a game or, or a, uh, an ice rink under a court makes the the court wet <laughs> like it's ah this is interesting uh, so if I <laughs> If you think FanDuel is making the right decision, let me know. If you don't think so, let me know in the comments below. I just wanted to, to, to talk about that a little bit because I think we're going to hear a little bit more about it in the uh, DFS medium. Um, if you guys want to hang out with us at RunDFS.com, we will have premium content for NBA all season long, uh, most notably the spreadsheets featuring my favorite picks, my positional picks. Um, we have supported FanDuel. I, I think we're going to keep supporting FanDuel in terms of um, projections and, and spreadsheet information and, and my favorite picks on, on either site, but uh, <sighs> I'm not a fan of this. Maybe we got to sleep on it a little bit more and see it play out, but it just seems like I'm, I'm going to be a DraftKings guy this year. What are you guys thinking? Leave a comment below. We got more NBA content coming. The season is going to be lit. Let's not let this hinder our uh, our fun, man. Love you guys. I'll catch you on the flip side. See you next video. Good luck. God bless. Go win some money.